So it's a tremendous honor to be receiving uh, this award, named for Maury Collin, for whom I have tremendous respect. Uh, and it's just uh, uh, humbling uh, but exciting to have a chance uh, to be recognized in this way. Edward Hans Shortliff, known to one and all as Ted, took his opening bow August 28, 1947, in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. That was the year Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier. The transistor was invented, and Howdy Doody debuted on TV. Ted's dad was a physician and soon to be hospital administrator. His mom, a high school English teacher. When Ted was still a kid, the family moved to Connecticut and he became a US citizen in 1962. After graduation from high school and a year as an exchange student in Great Britain, Ted matriculated at Harvard. And it was there that an advisor steered him to Massachusetts General Hospital and Octo Barnett's computer science lab. And that was this huge discovery for me. I hadn't known such things existed. I uh, went over there and got a, got a job working actually with Octo and with Bob Greenis, who was doing his PhD at the time. Uh, and uh, I just knew uh, from the very beginning that uh, I didn't need to choose anymore between medicine and computer science. I could really do both. Ted, my friend, thanks much for the opportunity of working together over these years. You have certainly done very well considering the limitations of your early training. Keep it up. Ted and I continued to work together and to collaborate on a variety of research projects and papers over the years, and we've been friends for a long time. In 1970, Ted graduated magna cum laude with an A.B. in applied math and computer science. Then it was on to the Stanford School of Medicine, where he received an M.D. and a Ph.D. in medical information sciences. And it was while pursuing his Ph.D. that Ted developed Mycin. Mycin was an expert system uh, designed to assist physicians in the selection of antibiotics, uh, in particular antimicrobial therapy for patients with severe infections such as meningitis and bacteremia. They separated the program from the knowledge base, they separated the, the reasoning from the output, they required the programs to be able to justify their conclusions. I mean all this was very transparent. And that approach that he brought as a medical guy to a computer science department really uh, cr contributed tremendously to the whole founding of the field of medical informatics. Although it was never deployed outside the lab, Mycin was shown to actually outperform members of the Stanford Medical School. Ted was the brilliant kid from their yard the Stanford Medical School, who came to play in our yard. He demonstrated to us with his PhD thesis on Mycin how to do expert systems another way. So thanks, Ted, for everything you were able to do for us at Stanford over all of those years. It was really wonderful. The first time I met him, I was introduced to him by Ed Feigenbaum, who said, uh, Don, I want you to meet Ted Shirtliff. He's really brilliant. And I thought of Ed Feigenbaum in those terms, and he didn't use that kind of terminology very often for anybody else, but he was right in this case. And I've enjoyed knowing Ted every day since those, since those early days. An internship in internal medicine took Ted to Mass General in Boston, but residency brought him back to Stanford. And in 1979, Ted joined the faculty of Stanford in internal medicine and computer science, and he would call Stanford home for more than two decades. My years at Stanford were kind of magical. Uh, I was in a wonderful supportive environment. My PhD advisor was a fellow named Stan Cohen, who's best known for gene splicing and his work uh, as a geneticist. It was clear from the beginning that Ted had a remarkable insight, both in what was needed in biomedical computing and for what was needed in, in clinical medicine. And uh, mycin at that time was an especially remarkable accomplishment for a young graduate student, also medical student, uh, spending his time in medical studies and also spending much of his time uh, writing the algorithms and having the discussions uh, necessary in order to bring mice into fruition. And I think he instilled in me uh, uh, a real belief that biomedical informatics and what I wanted to do uh, was as rigorous, scientific, uh, and important as anything I might do with test tubes in a laboratory. 
Uh, and I've tried to maintain that philosophy, uh, not only in my own work, but in the way in which I've trained students ever since. The Meissen program led to the Ankhusen project, which was supported in part by grants from the National Library of Medicine. The domain we chose is the field of clinical oncology, and in particular, the management of patients enrolled in chemotherapy protocols. I wanted to mention one of the key moments uh, in the development of expert systems here at Stanford. Uh, that key moment was a presentation in 1986 by TED uh, to the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center, which is nearby. It was one of the first demonstrations of medical expert systems using graphical user interfaces. And even though the people at, at Xerox had developed a graphical user interface, they had never seen the kind of interfaces that we were showing. It was really a key milestone in the development of the Onkison system, which followed on to Ted's early work in Meissen. Onkison was used primarily from 1981 to 1987. Ted has the, I think, singular ability to look at work in context and was extremely influential in the medical informatics community in adopting an experimentalist approach to the work that we do and I think he will always be known for that. One of the great things about TED is his commitment to training and mentoring the next generation of informaticists. I've been extremely fortunate to benefit from TED's advice and support for almost 20 years. In the early 90s medical informatics evolved and became biomedical informatics. I think Ted Shirtlock made a conscious decision to, to broaden the scope of what was then viewed as uh, medical informatics, largely focused on medical decision making, deliberately to include the emerging molecular biology. I'm personally grateful to Ted for his mentorship over the past 20 years, and Stanford, of course, is extremely grateful for starting the Medical Information Sciences Program in 1982. We're now in our 26th or 27th year. We've been renamed Biomedical Informatics, but we very much continue in the tradition that Ted started. I've watched with pride as Ted has developed as a major educator, researcher, and spokesperson for the field of biomedical informatics. With all that Ted Shortliff was accomplishing professionally, his private and social calendar was equally crowded. There were his daughters, Lindsay and Lauren, as they grew from childhood charming to grown-up gorgeous. And as he travels to exotic and far-flung destinations such as New Zealand, Fiji, Mexico, Brazil, and Israel, it is the rhythms of jazz that constitute the soundtrack of Ted's life. His recreational pursuits lean more to the outdoors, with Ted always looking for those teachable moments away from campus. For example, Ted would take us to ski trips on Lake Tahoe and encourage a lot of extracurricular activities for students and faculty to socialize. In all those occasions, he would always have some comment on the newest technology or newest uh, political development that would impact medical informatics research and training. Throughout his career, Ted has been a prolific writer, having authored or co-authored more than a half dozen books. And when you add study reports and journal articles, conference papers, book chapters, and miscellaneous publications, the number tops 300. Your work has had a long-term impact. You did a fantastic job with your rule-based systems book summarizing the Stanford experience, and more recently, broadening the field with your journal on biomedical informatics. Uh, you continue to be a inspiration to us all. Part of this skill is being articulate, but also it involves building an environment where smart people want to come, where new ideas happen and are valued and pursued. Ted has been extremely effective and generous of his time in helping to enunciate and shape informatics policy at local, national, and international levels. Hi, Ted. What a time we've had since May 1980. Wonderful students, great parties, and oh, those crummy budgets. All so memorable. As the calendar rolled into the new millennium, Ted was ready to take his copious skills to the East Coast. So in 2000, he said goodbye to Stanford and signed on as professor and chair in the Department of Biomedical Informatics at Columbia University. Ted has uh, distinguished both Stanford and now Columbia with its training program and 
owing in large part to the scientific and methodological approach that Ted brings to education and training. A very, very fine environment of, of consideration, of intellectual honesty and cooperativeness that's, I think, unrivaled and a real tribute to Ted personally and professionally. For those of us that didn't have clinical training or came to the program more from the engineering side, he allowed us to have exposure with clinical clerkships to a variety of hospital and outpatient settings. So we all developed a clear understanding for a need for a multidisciplinary approach where you understood the aspects of the problem from all sides. We do miss Ted Shortliff here as an integrating force and wish him much success in Columbia. Much sought after as a keynote speaker and member of public and private advisory groups, Ted has always responded generously. What's especially remarkable about Ted is how he can contribute on many levels at the same time. He will make positive contributions substantively to any discussion, and then at the end, he'll quietly come up and point out how the process could be even more improved in the future. Even as Ted maintains his staggering schedule, he has found time to open his heart and his life. And Vimla Patel became Mrs. Ted Shortliff in an intimate ceremony in Venice. And you know, amidst the beauty and success that encompasses the length and breadth of Ted Shortliff's life, you'd think there'd be some funny anecdotes, wouldn't you? You know the famous they. Well, they said that I'm supposed to tell a funny story about Ted. But frankly, nothing funny ever happens around me. Hi, Ted. Uh, in honor of this event, I'm wearing my core memory tie that I got at the Computer Museum. My hat's off to Ted Shortliff on this wonderful recognition. My respect for Ted and his work is simply enormous. I can think of no better tribute uh, to your accomplishments and your leadership in our field than this Morris F. Collin Award. Congratulations. Well deserved, and I hope that you enjoy it. As I look around the country and I see our graduates of the program at Stanford and now at Columbia having an impact in their own environments, whether it's academic or industry or government. Um, I love it and, uh, and it's probably what I look back on as, as the greatest accomplishment.